Hi everyone, before we start the actual production on our series, I want to take a moment to give you a brief introduction to BMesh, Blender's new modeling system that is bundled within Blender. Uh, it will be included in the Blender 2.63 release when it comes out pretty soon here. Uh, since we're using a development version of Blender, uh, during this series, obviously we need to be careful with everything that we do, and since some things have changed with the addition of BMesh, I want to be sure to bring you all up to speed on what some of those most prominent changes are that affect the modeling process before we actually get into the modeling process. So, to, in short, BMesh is a new modeling architecture that, for the most part, does not affect you at all. You can continue modeling as you have been. It doesn't... Uh, change the output of your model or anything like that. What it does do though is give you extra power during the modeling process uh, to work with things like ingons, have a less destructive modeling process, etc. It also gives you a few new actual modeling tools and with many more to come in the near future. If you're not familiar with ingons, which is kind of the the fundamental change with BMesh, ingons are polygons with more than four sides to the polygon. So you could have a single face slash poly uh, with five edges or six edges or 30 edges. And it's very, very good for architectural modeling and a lot of other modeling because it allows us to give a much cleaner mesh and a much less destructive modeling process when we're modeling our, our objects. Uh, and for this series, we're not gonna be using them a whole lot. Uh, simply because the the actual models that we're working with in this series are relatively simple when it comes to form. But we, I still want to get, make sure you are up to speed and give you a quick rundown on the changes and how to work with them. So, first of all, with ingons. What ingons mean is if we're in edit mode, and let's just say we want to uh, extrude a section out of the center of this face, well, this means that we definitely need to add more polygons here. So we could simply hit Control R, add in say two loop cuts, and maybe do the same thing here. And then in face mode, maybe extrude this section. Or, you know, you could of course go into face mode, extrude this section, and then extrude it again. There's any number of ways that you could do that. But if you wanted to go this route, and not have all of this extra geometry added in there, that's very easy to do now because you can simply select, say, just this one face, hit W and subdivide twice, and you'll notice that it has not added any extra geometry in the surrounding areas. And this is an example of an, in an ingon, where these are obviously all quads because each face has four edges per quad, whereas each one of these faces has actually if we go into edge mode, has one, two, three, four, five, six edges. And so this is an ingon. And this is very, very handy because not only does it mean we can have a much cleaner model uh, with, with, for architectural purposes and you know showcasing cl to clients and such, it also means we have a much less destructive process. Because even though I would probably at some point later down the road want to connect these somewhere, you know, maybe something like this or like this, However it is that I want to do that, I don't have to make that decision yet. I can go ahead and just leave these edges here and leave this as an ingon and not have to worry about making those decisions yet because of the fact that it's an ingon. And so that's what I mean by much less destructive editing, where you can kind of just model selectively on the specific area and not affect the surrounding area with higher topology or anything like that. Now, Let's look at a couple of the additional tools that come with this. If you wanted to go ahead and connect this now, say like this and like this, well, in the past, the way that you would have to do that, even if this were triangles, is if you wanted to add in, say, two vertices here, so you would select this edge, you would hit W and subdivide, sub subdivide it twice, and you would probably get something like, like that. But now with ingons, we actually get this, a nice uh, smooth single solid face. And since we now have these vertices here, we could go ahead and connect these with the new vertex connect tool. And this works by just selecting one vertex and a second vertex and then pressing the J key. And what that'll do is split 
any faces between these two vertices with a single edge. So now we have a single quad and a single ingon rather than a single ingon. Now we can do the same thing by just selecting these, hitting J, and maybe we'll select this one and this one, hit J, this one and this one, hit J, and so you can continue doing this any way that you want. Now if you decide suddenly that you don't want this, you decide you want to go ahead and keep an ingon there, you can simply select the faces that are involved and press F, where previously F would fill a face or try and convert two selected triangles to a quad, it will now take all of the selective, I mean it still does all of that, but it will also take any of the selected faces and convert them to a single ingon. Same thing right here, if we wanted to say convert this into an ingon, we decide that we don't want this vertex here in the center, we can just select the four, press F, and it converts it to a single ingon. You also notice that it has removed that vertex here. Now, it's left this vertex here because it doesn't touch any of the bounding geometry, essentially, when you convert something like that to an ingon. But if we wanted to get rid of this vertex in the past, yet again, in the past, and in actually the current official release, and this is one of the reasons we're using the development version, among others, is if we would just have to hit X, delete the vertex, and then we'd have to refill in all those faces. Or alternatively, you could select this vertex, then maybe select this one, hit W, and merge, and merge at last, but that's a cumbersome way to do it, particularly because if you're going to be doing this a lot, you don't want to have to do that over and over again. Well, now we have the ability to just dissolve edges, vertices, or faces, where if we just select a single vertex, press X, we have the dissolve function right here, and we can just hit dissolve, and it will automatically just remove that vertex. If you do this with an edge, such as right here, select this one, and this one, select the edge, hit X, dissolve, it'll remove the entire thing. Now you will notice that this has not worked very well because it's removed some of the surrounding geometry, and now we have just this single big kind of ingon hole right here. Well, uh, dissolve works best when you're in the selection mode that you wish to remove. So if we wanted to remove just this edge and leave this edge and this edge intact, you would be best to do it by hitting control tab, go into edge mode, select this edge, and then hit X and dissolve, and that would then remove it. Now you will notice it's left these two vertices behind. Uh, this is something that's likely to be fixed, but it still is, then you can dissolve the, the vertices very easily, but just be aware that there are some things like that that will likely cause you problems if not done correctly, but at the same time are very, very handy. You can see how I just dissolved that one single vertex, or I dissolved this one. And so this is how uh, BMesh brings a much less destructive modeling process to Blender, and one of the reasons we're going to be using it today. One of the other things BMesh does is allow you to delete more than a single edge loop at a time. You may be aware in 2.62 uh, and back, if you select an edge loop, you could hit X and delete the edge loop. Great, great feature. But if you ever wanted to remove a lot of edge loops, you couldn't do that. Well, now in BMesh, you can. If you select two edge loops, just hit X, delete edge loops. Blender doesn't care. It just removes them because it knows their edge loops. Now, if you delete multiples, you'll notice that it does not work because it has an invalid boundary region to join them. Basically, if you have two adjacent edge loops and you want to remove them, it won't work. But if you have alternating ones like this, or even say like this, it'll work no problem. Uh, one more feature that we have in BMesh that is uh, very good, well, not very good yet necessarily, but it's in the right direction, is the bridge tool. Many of you will be familiar with the bridge tool from the loop tools function, or if you've modeled in other applications, and that is the ability to basically connect, say, this area with this area using the surrounding geometry. Well, now it's actually built into BMesh and is li likely to be improved in the very near future. If you simply hit Control E and bridge two edge loops, you'll notice that it just bridges them together. Now, currently, it does not have the ability to remove this inside face like we would want it to, but that's no problem to fix real quickly. Or, you know, if you had, say, something like, like this, and you wanted to bridge these together, oops, say bridge these, you could hit Control E and bridge, and then of course we wouldn't have that interior face. So it partially depends on how you do it to see what works. 
uh, but it's great to have that function built directly into uh, 2.5 or 2.63 when it comes out very soon. Now, one more feature that I want to talk about is beveling. Beveling is, of course, this, um, you know, the tool of all tools that everyone wants and nearly everyone needs, particularly in the architectural world, and that unfortunately Blender has sorely lacked for a very long time. Now, as it stands today on uh, March 17th, the bevel tool is not great, but it's much better than it was in the past and partially depends on what you're currently beveling. But if we just assume for a second that we're doing very simple beveling, such as if we want to bevel this edge like this, then it works very well. If we simply select this edge, hit W and bevel, you can see what it's done. We then have the percentage option right here, the recursion level, and the recursion level works great for the first level or two, and then it starts to get a little funky because you can see kind of what's happening here, but it's been improved. Um, these are It's still under heavy development, and so this is likely to change, but the fact is we have it, and it's better than it was or better than it's been in the past. Uh, the other thing to note with this is since how we had our edge selected, you'll notice that the surrounding geometry is an ingon. And so it hasn't created all these nasty triangles like it normally would have something like that. Uh, and we can do the same thing, you know, if we wanted to say bevel these two edges, we can do that no problem. So as long as it's used in fairly limited cases, it works really, really well. Now, of course, you will find some areas where it doesn't work quite as well. So just be aware of that and be aware that these tools are likely to change. And so to use them with caution and adapt as needed. Uh, that's pretty much it for Beamish. Most of uh, the, the, you know, the biggest thing that's changed is the, the ingons. And if you're not sure about it, just spend a little time playing with it. I think you'll quickly find the, the modeling process to be much more fluid, much less destructive, and much more to your liking than in past versions. So that's it. Let's get started.